bag. I want the bag. Work my way from a garden to a track. Flip it from a track to a plot full of acres. Do it for the farmers and the producers and the makers. What we even here for? Occasionally I ask it. I know it's more than struggling, anticipating the casket. Reap what we sow. I'm trying to fill up my basket. Life's a plantation. I self-law and master. Over the plot, I've been granted on this planet Now we're slanted, cause the chosen been supplanted But if you overstand it, it was spoken Fractured, but we ain't broken Even though some would rather play the role of token We growing Black through the essence of a presence We carry the blood of gods, we carry the mind of peasants Rich black gardens, future look more like Eden Multiply seeds like the seed banks in Sweden Rep my planners on plan according to season Be one cold Switching it up is treason. Black power, family, what we eat. Either we get fed or we feed. Be one day. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by a copyright statute that may otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. What's going on? What's growing on? What is growing on? Welcome back to the B1AG Daily Bread Podcast. I'm Don Henry Harris. We also have Farmer Brown, the MC. Here at B1AG, we focus on black agriculture that pertains to agricultural production, health, food, and nutrition all for the black family and all for the black community welcome black we got a great story for you today um rapper waka flock of flame out of atlanta you know he's known for his songs like oh let's do it go hard in the paint no hands uh he retired from the rap industry a few months ago but now he's decided that he's gonna teach himself how to farm and we are going to look at this. Uh, oh, let's do it. Waka Flocka, learning how to farm. You know, this has been a kind of like a recent wave of black entertainers, and rappers, uh, athletes. You know, they've all been going into agriculture. And this is a trend or a wave. Hopefully it's not something temporary, but hopefully it's something that, you know, we see happen on a permanent basis. Farmer Brown. What do you think about Waka Flock and learn how to farm? First, I'd just like to say peace to the B1 family. It's high infinite power healing our people. Peace to the elder Professor Griff. Hip hop has been taking some blows lately. Uh, we see the power of hip hop when it comes to marketing, you know, social engineering, certain ideas, uh, certain things within the melanated community, uh, whether you're being that thing up or, or turning up in a prison. Uh, twerking. And so we've been getting some real uh, suspect uh, uses of hip hop. But I think this story of Waka Flocka, man, it's, it's like the ram in the bush. You know, it's like our baby of hip hop has been sacrificed in so many ways. But I think Waka Flocka and what he's doing, along with so many other brothers and sisters who, you know, are getting that wake up call that it's time to get black to the garden. Glad to talk. I'm glad to touch upon this today. Now, I'd like to just show uh, our viewers exactly what we're talking about. This is uh, Waka Flocka getting his farm on. <laughs> All right, man. Got the hay. See my babies. Oh, leaving the Home Depot. Yes. Bro, look at that man walk, though. Yeah, don't fucking play with him. Told myself, I'm going to learn how to farm, bro. Taylor. And I was just a short clip, but you see, he's really getting his prints in the mud. He's digging in. And um, like I said, he's going to teach him. So he's going to learn how to farm. Now, this is a, now as far as Waka Flocka himself, uh, this is a transition kind of that he's been making over time. 
Uh, like I said, he hasn't he hasn't dropped an album in over seven years. But during that time, during his interviews, you can see that his mental state has been changing. Uh, you know, as far as he's cleaned himself up, as far as with the drugs and the drinking. You know, he went through a bout of depression. He fought through that. Uh, he lost his brother to suicide. Um, during his interviews, you can see that he's he's become he had he was just becoming more awakened into a lot of different knowledge. And uh, even he's been a vegan now for several for a few years. So this is the although it, it seems crazy that this uh, one trap rapper, you know, a trap rapper is now becoming a farmer. You know, this is actually a trend. This is actually a transition that's been going for that's been happening for a while. I believe for him. So I'll be honest. I remember when we was down on Gresham. Uh, we were down in Atlanta for about five years, and I remember this was around the time. This is the early two thousands when Waka Flocka, Gucci, uh, Jeezy, that whole crew was coming up, so to speak. And I just remember, you know, the being very conscientious of the change of the direction hip hop was going. Uh, for those of us in our 40s, late 30s, we we pretty much remember this time. And we remember the influence specifically that Waka Flocka had on how music sounded. Uh, you know, the type of energy you brought to the stage. It went from being cool, laid back, to gangster, to popping collars, to really being crunking. So this is the one of the influences that Waka Flocka had. Uh, I'll be honest, I wasn't big on Waka Flocka's music. I was, I was still more so on, you know, the down south. Uh, you know, cash money. But I remember seeing a video with uh, an interview with him a few, about a year or two back, and he was acknowledging his Aboriginal roots, you know, his Turtle Island roots of being a native of this land. Uh, and that's when I gained great respect for this man. Because it's like, you know, a lot of people, you know, you get these, you have these conversations. Uh, a lot of times people like to throw that conspiracy theorist, oh, you know, you hate yourself. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. But he was very uh, conscientious. He was very aware, like, hold up. You know, I'm not going along with this narrative that's being placed on me. And so I think, you know, it's great in the conscious community. Many people in the conscious community are already aware that the history we see of ourselves is skewed in many ways. But for him to understand, like, I know what the world sees of me. They see me as walk a flock of flame uh, going hard in the paint. But to come out and not only acknowledge his aboriginal roots but then really put his prints in the mud i said i think that says a lot uh i think this only feeds my optimism about this being our finest hour uh, a few days ago the sister lioness crown she laid it out with the uh what she say little non-x video it was it was a horrible look for the hip-hop culture it was a horrible look uh, not disparaging anybody's lifestyle, but we are very aware of images. We're very aware of social marketing, social engineering. In a time where the world is changing, in a time where we have a lot of uh, food shortages or food system disruptions, not only going on here, but uh, around the world, I think anything that takes our eyes away from what we should be focusing on as a melanated community, eh, it's not producing justice. And so, with all of that happening, you know, the V that thing up video that went viral a couple of weeks ago, I think this is a great relief to the melanated community. The fact that he's actually showing these images. And so, uh, and not to clout chase. So I've been trying to, you know, do my little thing over the last uh, almost, almost decade now, trying to get younger people to kind of reconnect with the land, see the farming. Hey, you know, it's more to farming and plows and cows. He's been able to do this in literally a couple of tweets, just showing himself. Because the whole thing is imagery. And I'm hoping the B1 family understands what I'm saying. Uh, seeing is believing. It's one thing we get on here on our high horses, uh, you know, being all righteous or whatever, saying, hey, you need to get back to the land and, and hug the trees. But it's another thing, you know, these young folks seeing people that they respect, people that they listen to embracing this lifestyle. The fact that he's teaching himself, I think this says a lot to the melanated community about our potential and what each of us can do in our respective spaces. Absolutely. You know, you know, for the audience, I don't, me and Farmer Brown, we both have been music artists. And when we moved to Atlanta, we moved to overall Boulder Crest and Gresham Road. 
Shout out ATL, Boulder, Chris, Gresham Road. We were actually in the same neighborhood as Gucci Mane, Waka Flocka, uh, Miss Atney, Deborah Atney, right there in the same neighborhood, uh, trying to get our start in the music industry. So it's just amazing to me. It's like almost like wow that he's uh you know he's come full circle. We're all you know work trying to get it, working with agriculture, you know. So it's just, it's almost like a like the prodigal son coming home. You know that like we're all coming back to the land. We're all like the land is calling us home, and uh, not to die but to live. Like the land is calling us home to live. So shout out to Waka Flocka um, and all the other uh, rappers and entertainers that are getting back to the land because, uh, you know, it's really where we come from. Now, uh, Farmer Brian, you want us to pull up that uh, that infographic? Yeah. So while he's pulling it up, family, uh, like I said, this is a beautiful moment, not only for hip hop, this is a, be a beautiful moment for what we call black agriculture, melanated agriculture, not just in North America, but around the world. Uh, Waka Flocka, you know, I'm not a person that believes in the concept of calling somebody, you know, less intelligent. I think 2 Chain said it best. He said, it's easy for a smart person to play dumb, but a dumb person can't play smart. Uh, a lot of people assume uh, specifically when you're talking about down South rappers and hip hop that, you know, cats ain't thinking, you know, cats is less than because we talk different. But I think, you know, what he represents in hip hop as far as the type of stigmas that people has placed on him, I think that, that says even more about what each of us are capable of doing. It's one thing if you're most deaf, if you, you know, you're more conscientious uh, East Coast rappers came out and rap because we got brothers like Styles P who's been talking about this, uh, Red Pill, Blue Pill. You know, a lot of cats already been talking about this but to take it to the South, because we know, you know, let's just be honest, the South influences a lot of culture. Uh, jazz came from the South. A lot of the music, rock and roll, everything came from the South, up that Mississippi River uh, during the Industrial Revolution, during the Trail of Tears. And so, like you said, as it's coming back full circle, I think any of us watching, whether you're watching this podcast or, or seeing some of the stories about Waka Flocka, I think it gives all of us an uh, excuse to get black to the garden. It gives us an excuse. We can't say, oh, well, you know, I don't have time. Oh, well, I'm in another field. This brother was very successful in hip hop. Uh, regardless of how you feel about his music, he was successful. He wasn't a bust. He's not living a bust life. He's literally like, hey, you know, higher infinite power healing our people. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to be on. And so I think, like I said, considering everything going on around the world right now, these changes, I've heard that NW word. NWO word thrown around, the New World Order word thrown around. I think the Prime Minister of Australia came out and said it. And so whether you're into the conspiracy theories or not, we're in a Novus Ordo Seclorum, a New World Order. And so as this new world is appearing, seeing this image of Waka Flocka flame of all people in the world should be a great sign that we're in our finest hour, family. So as we discussed it, look, look at it, you know, seeing is believing. Uh, I do have to put my tinfoil kufi on just briefly because I too do tend to believe that a lot of these brothers that's, that's on this infographic over the last few years has been, has been very consistent in putting out a message. And like I said, it's one thing you got your conscious rappers talking about it. Uh, people like KRS-One, uh, they've been talking about it forever. But to have somebody like Lil Boosie come out talking about buying land, he's talking about, man, you know, don't don't buy designer, buy some land. What you spend in a year on designer clothes, you can get a couple of acres. Uh, when you have people like Styles P coming out, he's not promoting alcohol. He's not promoting, you know, all of the negative things that hip hop has been used as a marketing tool. He's, he has a vegan, uh, a vegan juice bar. We have people like Master P coming out talking about grocery chains. So there are factions of the opaque layer that are watching, like, hold up. You know, hip-hop wasn't supposed to be selling healing. It wasn't supposed to be selling positivity. And so I, I do believe this is why we, one of the reasons we see this onslaught of this negative 
activity, this uh, what we'll call a slut culture, this culture of, you know, do, do, do what you want to do. Don't worry about how it's affecting your community. Don't worry about how it's affecting the kids. And so I think this infographic, these are just a few brothers who are specifically dealing in everything that we need as a community to build ourselves as this world is changing. And I think uh, another key component as to, I mean, you know, I, when you're young, you say and do young things. You know, these rappers, these entertainers, they've gotten, they've went through the gamut. They've been able to grow. They survived that industry. And as they, uh, you know, got older, they learned what and where real wealth comes from. And at the end of the day, that real wealth comes from the ground. That real wealth comes from land. That real wealth comes from food production. You know, that's, <laughs> I said it a long time ago, man. Food flips harder than any drug on the planet. You can sell all the crack you want. You can sell all the cocaine you want or whatever. But it's nothing, it doesn't make more money than food because everybody's not a drug addict, but everybody has to eat at the end of the day. You have to eat. You don't have it's you have to eat. If you don't eat, you will perish. So there's nothing that makes more money. And this is for all the entrepreneurs, everybody who aspires to, you know, to be a block star. There's nothing that makes more money than food, food and water. Because we have to have it. Hey, bro, and we're gonna touch on this in, in another session, but Nestle. Uh, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about uh, in Israel, the first lab-grown meat factory opened up a few weeks ago. Uh, we know that in the next 40 years, they're saying 60% of the meat that we're going to be or the meat products or protein sources that the world's going to be eating is going to come from lab-grown meat. If you can bring that infographic back up. When we look at people like Jay-Z, for example, uh, he, he partnered with the, uh, somebody to create nugs. And this is plant-based chicken nuggets. Uh, any lunchroom you go to across the country, uh, our, our kids love chicken nuggets. Uh, I definitely uh, see the value in vegan and vegetarian diets. And so since we know that the world is going towards a new way of eating, uh, we don't want to be eating soy green, soil and green out here. And so Jay-Z took his entrepreneurial mindset and understood to invest early in vegan meat. Uh, we think about somebody like Chief Keef. Right now, drill music is, uh, you know, it, it has an indelible effect on the culture, uh, whether we're talking about as, as hip hop artists, whether we're talking about just what's going on in the streets. But Chief Keef, uh, he has his own cannabis dispensary, right? And so one will be like, well, what does that have to do with agriculture? Somebody as influential as, as Chief Keef has been on the street culture. Uh, instead of promoting, talking negatively about these negative images that we keep seeing of hip hop, are we incentivizing brothers like this to come out more about their entrepreneurial endeavors in agriculture? Because you don't get cannabis without growing something. Uh, you have to grow it in a facility, uh, whether these are greenhouses, whether these are high tunnels, these are operations, these are agricultural operations. And so the degree that we can make uh, Something like Chief Keith having a dispensary go viral. Okay, uh, can Chief Keith take the game he's got with dispensaries and team up with the Styles P? You know, are, are there agents? A brother brought up a few uh, sessions ago. He was saying, man, these athletes got agents. As soon as they come in the game, they got agents to help direct them, you know, what they're going to do with their careers, what they're going to do, whatever earnings they have. And so are there agricultural agents, not only to work with the artists, but to work with the black farmers, the melanated farmers? to make a connection with the chief Keith who has market and appeal to a much younger generation. Cause it's going to be the youth that's going to get us out of this, this wilderness to hook up with a styles P is there a connection to get Jay Z's vegan meat styles P's vegan juice to hook up with the master P who's working on building the grocery chain. We're not going to sit here and say, Hey man, you know, all of us can just, you know, pitch our money together and get grocery stores. It's not that easy. Uh, the, the grocery stores that we see that exist now, they didn't come about overnight. These are generational uh, family businesses that was passed down. I know Dr. Boyce, uh, one of his tenets is we, we need to be ruling the world in the next 200 years. Uh, some people say we're, we're going to be at zero wealth by 2050. And I tend not to believe that. 
I tend to believe the degree that we're able to really codify around some very specific uh, non-denominational, uh, non, uh, you know, non-divisive items such as food security. Uh, bro, I, I want you to touch on 2 Chains and Juicy J, because to get any of these operations going, you have to power it. Uh, we, we like our smart devices. We see the Bill Gates, the largest farmland owner in North America, owns 240 some thousand acres. Uh, do you think he's out there on a tractor? No, he's implementing technology. But I think the story you were talking about with 2 Chains and Juicy J and in, in investing in solar energy. Yes, uh, they definitely 2 Chains and uh, Juicy J, you know, Juicy J literally said, well, I was going to go buy a diamond watch, but I decided to make an investment into the solar energy company instead. Um, that so that investment that he made into a startup solar energy company, uh, that so that startup solar energy company ended up being uh, now valued at two billion dollars, and uh, two chains also um, made his uh, investment in that same solar energy. They're expanding their minds. They're looking to they're looking beyond the standard wrap package of cars, jewelry uh houses clothes you know they're really looking into what makes wealth what can i put my money into that's gonna make sure that my kids can eat you know not that we get there and they're sharing this info and what's most important is that they're sharing this information with us with the consumer with their fans because you know you know, uh, a lot of people do things because of what they hear their favorite rappers say or what they hear in their favorite rapper songs. So the more positive, the more productive that I see that our favorite rappers, entertainers, our athletes that they share with us, hopefully we'll just like we'll mimic the bad that they say in their songs. Hopefully we'll mimic the, the great that they do in their songs. You know, Master P, he talked a lot about selling crack. And a lot of people started selling crack because of Master P. I mean, just to be honest, you know, not judging them right or wrong. But I hope those same people see that, wow, Master P, he's investing in food. He's uh, he's investing in, in uh, grocery stores. Oh, he's investing in us. Uh, uh, in, in, in electric cars, electric vehicles. Bro, I hope they can make the same. I hope I, I really hope and pray that they make the same transition. It's a transition. You got to be grown, folks. And it's all about survival. Let's make bro, that so transition. Over this, past, over this past two weeks, you know, uh, the brother Tariq Nasheed, you know, he, he said it came to his heart to, to build a museum. I'm bringing this point up to say the concept of crowdfunding. And so we know anything that happens and, you know, nothing is for free in this world. But, uh, you know, just kind of watching. I know as of now, I think he's up to about 300,000, you know, crowdfunding. I think his goal was like a million just to make sure he can secure the land. And it, it, it's kind of perturbing how petty some of us are. And, you know, maybe, maybe I don't want to use the word petty. I'll say skeptical. But family, uh, you know, dealing with this opaque layer of what we'll call white supremacy that we, we're dealing with, we've come into a culture where we don't trust each other. Uh, I, I wish it was different, but that's just what it is. We don't trust each other. But the point I'm coming to is at some point we're going to have to. We're going to have to break this cycle of distrust. He came out very codified and said, I want to build a museum. I need a million dollars up front to make sure we get this land. I watched in literally a week. He was able to generate at least 300,000. I'm making this point to say every one of these endeavors that we see on the screen, these different brothers, you know, they're coming out of pocket to invest in these different agricultural ventures. But do we have, you know, your finance people like your Boyce Watkins, your educators like your Dr. Umar that are really put, you know, kind of looking past our differences. And, and, and in a way I'm speaking utopian, but at the same time I see the potential because I'm watching it all happen in real time. Can we look past the things that we don't really like about each other or suspect and put it behind codified efforts? Like I said, Master P opening a grocery chain, those are millions of dollars. 
Uh, am I saying, yeah, black folks, let's, let's, let's just put all our money together and just open up a million grocery stores. That's not feasible. But we know, you know, we can literally pinpoint where it is that the majority of me the melanated family resides in what we call North America, Turtle Island. Do we start with the larger cities first? Because we see on a, on a governmental, not even just governmental, international level, there is a plan for us, family. There is a plan for us. And it is, it's not to keep you healthy and safe. It is to keep you in a box. And do we want to be in this box for the next few decades? And so what this would take is codified approaches. Okay, you know, step one, we're going to make sure for one, we, we're going to secure the farmers. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a lot of brothers, you know what I'm saying, really putting this work in. So how do we make this message go viral? That is the whole point of B1 Act. How do we make this message go viral? And so, okay, first security, the few black farmers who've been strong enough to keep their land, secure that. Because guess what? That's who's going to source your wing stops. That's who's going to source the produce for, say, your Styles P. Uh, these are going to be the people to come through with, with hands-on experience for a chief keeping his dispensaries, whether you're talking about cannabis or whether you're talking about him. Because if you can grow cannabis, guess what? You can grow him. What do we get from him? There's 25,000 different products that come from him alone. And so if, 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 if with my influence, I can convince you to go buy all of this weed. Uh, the government wants to give you weed to get you know medically uh, experimented with. Right. I'm being funny, but not. And so how do we secure the already existing producers? Second layer. OK, we have people like Waka Flocka Flame. How do we support the, the already existing producers to build that next layer, that replacement layer of the Waka Flocka age age range who want to get into farming, who want to. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> who want to get into farming. How do we make sure that that layer has a has a formidable onboarding process? And then after the walk of flock of flames, how do we make sure? Okay, we're about to go into a, a, a lockdown again. We're about to go into social distance again. How are we making sure that we're still engaging our youth? Because we see that the mainstream has a whole nother narrative that they want to take our youth into. They want to make our youth think that oh, it's cool to go to jail and you're going to turn up and and not produce anything if you take on that mindset. You know, you're not going to be, you know, put that on an island, what you're going to have in the next 40 years. Zero growth. So saying that to say we got to take the same approach, the same energy that we see mainstream is using hip hop, not just the music, but the culture, the entities, the legends. How do we as a melanated community support it? We know there are black blank banks around the country. You know, we like to romanticize this concept of black Tulsa, all the black towns, uh, Asheville, but how do we recreate that? Because once again, back then when they were when they were operating, they didn't have social media to where everybody around the world can see what's going on. Uh, I'm telling you, family, some people that, you know, we got some dogs trapped in the corner. And so you can expect them to throw the kitchen sink. But instead of throwing the kitchen sink back at them, what are we doing to build this kitchen and really start whipping it up? Can we support the black farmers? Can we create onboarding processes? Because we see that the USDA, we see that the agencies aren't going to make it rain on our black farmers. Right now, in, in no way, take it like I'm saying, it's great that we're having these droughts and, and climate issues because it's not great. Because whatever happens to the land is inevitably going to affect all of us. It's going to affect the prices that we pay. It's going to affect the availability of the foods that we eat. The point I'm making is, hey, while everything is in chaos or everybody's trying to figure out what's going on, there's nobody that's going to come trip us up, family, if we decide to follow Waka Flocka's lead. I'm going to teach myself how to grow. Uh, I spent a lot of money and went in debt to learn how to farm. I didn't know no better. You know, I didn't have a lot of people, you know, coming to me saying, hey, bro, you know, this is the way. This is what people need. And so, you know, I bite that. But at the end of the day, I know, hey, if you just meet somebody that does this, you know, you take we take time out of our busy day and just follow, mentor around them. You got people like Lee Farmer. There's all sorts of people right now who have content, who have programming, wherever you're at around the nation, who are already putting this work in that would love for Melanated family to come and just uh, mentor under them. Go out there and help them on their farm for a little bit and learn what the operations are. Uh, volunteer at some of your, uh, absolutely, we need more farmer's markets. And guess what? You, you know, waiting on mainstream society to come and invite us into these farm market. We don't need to do that. It goes back to the Chief Keith concept. We got people that understand marketing. I have a brick and mortar. We can make pop up farmers markets. Uh, we're a very innovative people. You know, the same way that we have uh, 
you know, uh, I remember I went to college. I went to a field party. And I mean, the white, it, the white boys was turning up field parties. Can we make field parties since we're going into a world where, where pandemics where, okay, I saw that you was within two feet of somebody that, that has this thing. Okay. <laughs> we know we still need to be together because we're social creatures, but hey, we're out, on, out here on this hundred acre farm that we paid this brother right here who owns this land to let us come out here and turn up, to let us bring our kids out here for farm tours, farm to table dinners, day parties, farm to table lunches, educational workshops. This is something that we can do, family. I, and you know, once again, going back to Waka Flocka, I think of all people in the world, for him, for him to have that epiphany, I think it says a lot about what we have the potential to do upon getting codified and agreeing that, you know what, we do need to eat, I don't want soy and green. I ain't really cool with the uh, alternative lab-grown meat. So how, how do we uplift those within the community who are visible to make it more popular for those that aren't visible, to make them the heroes of the local community? I guarantee anywhere you go, whether you're talking about the Southeast, Northeast, Southwest, Midwest, the farmers are the heroes, especially melanated farmers. You know, uh, I, we can't stress enough the hell that melanated farmers have gone through on, on what we call Turtle Island, North America, just trying to just trying to grow food, just trying to feed people. And so if we as a community and it don't take everybody, everybody's not going to buy in. And so that's not the goal. The goal is if we can get a critical mass of us, our personal goal is we want to reach 250,000 third through fifth graders within the next two years. Then the next two years, we want 250,000 third through fifth graders to get their first conversation about agriculture their first conversation about food production, their first imagery of seeing themselves within agriculture for melanated people. If we can do that out of that 250,000, if we can just get a third to agree that, okay, over the next five to 10 years, this is what I'm gonna pursue. And whether it's virtual school or in-person school, this is what I'm gonna pursue, working myself into the food system, whether I'm producing the food, whether I'm coming up with the science to produce food in better ways, whether I become an ecologist and learn how to work better with nature, whether I follow somebody like Two Chains and Juicy J who's getting into renewable energy, understanding solar energy, understanding uh, using water to create energy, understanding geothermal energy. If I learn how to be a technician, okay, I don't want to be a farm, but I see that we're going to have all these wind turbines popping up, uh, which produce energy. So can I become a technician that makes six figures a year? just learning how to fix uh, solar farms, solar panels. So all of these are different fields. Do we have to, you know, more of the hip hop brothers? Cause guess what? If you can write a, a, a 16 bar verse or a song, you can write a kid's book. Cause you know, it's frustrating trying to convince an adult, you know, I'm an old dog and it's, it's hard to teach old dogs new tricks. But if we can take a codified approach and really focus on rebuilding our place in agriculture, we're going to change the world just by us moving our head. It, it ain't about, hey, now let us just help everybody. No, let us help ourselves. And to that degree, what does it say? High infinite power healing our people. Hip hop. Family, we gotta get this conversation to grow bigger. We need this conversation to grow. We need this conversation that we're having about uh, black agriculture to go viral. And the only way we're going to do that is we need you to like, share, and subscribe. Please go to YouTube and subscribe to B1 Ag Daily Bread Podcast. You know, subscribe. Just type B1 Ag Daily Bread Podcast in the YouTube search bar. Subscribe. Like, share. Share our content. You know how the algorithms work. Uh, we're living in the algorithm world when we're online. To make the push that algorithm, you have to like and share, comment. You know, uh, thank you to the people that watch us on a day on every time we uh we broadcast. We, we really appreciate you. We appreciate your input. You know, if you want to reach out to us, uh just hit us up at b one ag hip hop at gmail.com. You know, reach out to us. Ask, we answer your questions. B1 ag hip hop at gmail.com. You know, we really want B1 Ag to be a conduit of information as well as motivation. And we want to be able to connect people to what they need as far as resources are concerned. 
So if you have questions on how to grow or what can you do to grow better, if we can't answer it for you, we can definitely point you to the direction of someone who can. And that's just being real. But we need this conversation to grow. We need more of our melanated peoples talking about, thinking about, being aware of what is going on with our food. What is going on with our food? Our food system is changing drastically at the moment and it's being extremely challenged at the moment. Not just because of the weather, but then also because of politics. The great Frederick Douglass, the golf great forefather Frederick Douglass, he warned us and told us that food can be used as a weapon. Literally, food can be used as a weapon because if you can control somebody's food, you in fact control them. So let's make sure that we as a people, you as a person, you and your family can make sure that you have the power to make sure that no matter what's going on, you can eat. If you're talking numbers in production distribution, hunger over habit, trapping food is a solution. Grinding in the city full of poison and pollution. All this land around me got me thinking about my future. Need a patch of grass to pass the future generations. Even if it's cash or plastic digital for payments. Talking agriculture, we not talking about enslavement. Me and all my shot is growing harder in the pavement. It's growing harder in the paint, family. <laughs> Heard that. And if you do want to get Black to the Garden, sign up at HealthyBlackFood.com to learn how to grow your own food. It's a great program. It's entertaining. We, we present this information in a way that you can understand. We go live every Thursday to answer all of your questions, any questions that you have. You know, create an environment for us to encourage each other, share our experiences, and grow hard. At the end of the day, we all got to grow harder. You know, it's 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 a matter of survival. It's a matter of survival. You know, we can sit here and talk about our spe our favorite sports teams, and we can sit here and talk about Lil Nas X wearing pink jail suits. If we can talk about you know WAP and twerking and do a, why can't we talk about uh, growing our own food? Why can't we talk about eating a healthy eating healthier why can't we talk about building our immune system by eating healthier to keep us away from all these things that are going on all these variants you know these are the things that will keep us alive it's a matter of how we survive never forget we have a lot of distractions on this on this planet we have a lot of distractions that come across our screens we got a lot of distractions that come across our laptops we got a lot of distractions that come up coming through the airwaves. Let's never forget to uh, keep the main thing in their main thing. And at the end of the day, the main thing is to make it to the next day, survive. And we don't wanna just survive, we wanna thrive and grow. So let's grow harder, let's grow on, and uh, hey, <laughs> and, it's, uh, and let's just flourish. You know, I, I like to say, uh, I'll talk about the grand harvest, you know, uh, my grandmother, grandfather, you know, we ate, you know, we ate as a family, big family. We sit down and we sat down in front of some of the best food you would ever imagine. And I would love for everyone on this planet, especially our melanated peoples, to be able to always sit down to the best food that you can imagine. You know what I'm saying? So this is a dream of mine. I want everybody to be able to enjoy their grand harvest. Let's put in that work. Let's grow harder and, and, and reap the benefits of a great harvest. Let's reap the benefits of a great harvest, a grand harvest. Brown, it's been a uh, walk of flocker. Said he going to teach himself how to farm. And oh, yeah, shout out to walk of flocker. Hey, we got a lot of good information for you to learn to help you learn how to farm. We know a lot of the same people. I've already reached out to them. Hopefully they'll reach out to you soon. We get you the information that you need. If you want us to come down there and show you Waka Flocka how to farm, how to grow harder, 
we would do that. We know a lot of the same people, bro. And uh, we're reaching out. And if you see this, if you if somehow you come across this, uh you get at us, man. B1 ag hip hop at gmail.com. Get at us. We're reaching out to you as well. Farmer Brian, you got any final words? In all seriousness, family, uh, we, we just jumped into these YouTube screeds this year, you know, where neither of us, you know, grew up wanting to be YouTubers or, or content creators. But uh, considering the gravity of what's going on right now, get all the information you can, print it off. When it comes to learning how to grow, you know, if you come across pages where uh, people are doing demonstrations, watch it. Uh, right now, there are many things going on with algorithms, you know, trigger words. Uh, we've been shot. I think the word is shadow banned, uh, talking about getting people to grow food. So saying that to say we're in a very uh, serious, interesting, but great time right now. So, you know, don't don't waste any time. Uh, it's better to know it and not need to use it than need to use it and not know it. Uh, right now, there's all sorts of information around you. So take advantage of it. Uh, this is, you know, to make use of your HBCUs because other people have use of the HBCUs. Reach out to your cooperative extension wherever you're at. If you're around a land grant institution, uh, call up your extension agents. Hey, I got an acre in the backyard. I got a quarter acre. Uh, I got some family land. You know, what can I do with it? Can I get some soil samples? Uh, can you test my water quality? Do I have any wells back here? Uh, once again, these are family activities. You, you might have family history where people don't like talking, but I think everybody in the family can appreciate being able to make their property, their land that their ancestors were able to keep productive. Uh, this is a great time, family. We are in our finest hour. And if you really, really want to know something, what do they need to do, Farmer Brown? Growing hard in the paint. Learn how to grow something. There it is, y'all. Let's grow hard in the paint. Let's do it. Let's get black to the garden. Let's really do it. Y'all be blessed. Be abundant. Be loving. <laughs> we're, out, we're getting through this week. Let's continue to grow. Let's always continue to grow. Let's bear great fruit. Let's, let's let's bear great fruit from this week. You know, there's a lot of things that we can learn from farming. There's a lot of things you will learn from farming. There's a lot of things you will learn from just growing. And uh, let's continue to grow and let's grow to the future. Have a wonderful day. And until we see you again, you know, be one ag. Be one ag family. See you next time.